Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final video in my video series on doing WebGL shadow mapping. At this point, if you have followed along in the first two, you have something like this running. Where you have a program where you can run around and it's great and there's shadows and the shadows look like crap on the sides of the table and on the sofa, but whatever. Because there's still shadows and shadow mapping is exciting, right? So in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an extension to WebGL uh, that will let me use floating point values inside of all of my textures. And so that way, instead of having to give it a normalized value between 0 and 1 for all these distances, which result in all this kind of weird artifacts and uh, floating point precision errors, we're going to instead use 32-bit floats. And so that we um, don't have to have a value between 0 and 1, we can store the length directly, and we don't have to mess with all of this normalizing and unit conversion and all that garbage. So. As you can see, here we have the texture text image 2D method, which we call a couple of different places, um, where we are using unsigned byte. And instead, what I want to use is I want to use gl.float. So here, instead of saying unsigned byte, and let's see, I think text image 2D, is that really the only place I'm calling it? Yeah, I think that's the only place I'm calling it. Wonderful, that'll make this a whole lot easier. So I want to use gl.float. Which if I were to try to run right now, let's bring up the debugger, it'll show like invalid frame buffer and all this, oh, you can't bind that, text image 2D, invalid type, ugh, that's not color renderable. So just a jillion errors and it's no longer working. Um, so the way to fix that is we need to get this extension. It's, uh, we just literally call gl.get extension with this. So gl.get extension, gl.oes, texture float um, and let's actually set this to something so we'll say like me dot float extension equals that so now if I refresh it GL is not defined of course it's not it's me dot GL um, oh also uh, I guess I should mention so I've been making copies of this the whole time so I have a copy of the videos at the er uh, of the code as it was at the end of the first video in this series, in case you don't want to watch the first video. If you skipped both the first and the second video, I don't know why you would do that, because the second video actually teaches you how to do the dumb thing. Um, and you can get that code from a different folder, which I'm going to upload. Um, yeah. So, whoops, let's see. So I'm actually kind of curious if this actually sets something. So float extension is null, so apparently gl.oes texture float is wrong. So let's try this. Maybe it's just OES texture float. Yep, okay. So that's the extension we wanted, is the OES texture float. So now we have the proper extension, and we can use this MeGL float. Um, yeah. So now what we have, when we have the draw elements, texture bound to texture unit 0 is not renderable. So maybe it's a non-power of 2, or incompatible texture filtering, or not texture complete, or the texture is float or half float type. Notice that's what we're using with linear filtering while OES float linear extension is not enabled. So let's get that extension too. So me float linear extension equals me gl get extension OES float linear. So float extension is just fine. Float linear extension is null because apparently we grabbed the wrong one. So float linear Maybe I don't, maybe I can't get that extension. Maybe that's why that's not working. Whoops. Linear. Maybe someone else on the internet has had the same problem. Oh yes, texture float linear. Oh, that's why. Oh yes, texture float linear. It was texture float linear. Great, great. Yep, so now we have both of those extensions and it's wonderful. So now you can see we're actually getting just the same exact thing that we had before, where we have all this weird... Oh, no, 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 we're not. We're getting much less problems because now the floating point precision is much better. So see how suddenly all of our problems have pretty much gone away. We don't have those weird zigzags on the side of the table. Now, instead, what we have is we have a little bit of that Peter Panning that I talked about in the last video where the shadows are becoming slightly detached. So we can do that by just lowering the bias by a lot. And if we do that, 
now our shadows are magically pretty much fixed. Um, and we do have some artifacts right around the edges. One of the reasons behind this is our walls are actually of zero thickness. Um, if our walls were a little bit thicker, we would have less of that problem, and like if the walls intersected each other, but they do not. Um, so that's one way to solve the problem, or another way that we can solve this is... Wow. Um, oh yeah, because we're also getting it right there, so we do need just a little bit more bias than that. So that was in our fragment shader, so maybe we'll do... we'll, we'll double the bias. I don't want to add too much more than that, though. Okay. So that's the kind of thing where you can just kind of play around with it until you get an effect that you like. I think that this looks great, and you know what? This is a... Uh... Wow. Um, that took less than 10 minutes, so I guess I'll spend the rest of the time. Why don't I write code that it will query for the extensions? If the extensions work, it'll use them. If not, it won't use them. So let's do this. If me.float extension and me.float linear extension. So if both of those were able to load, We'll use this code. Otherwise, we'll go back to using... Oh, what was it before? It was unsigned byte, I want to say. Um, and I'm just going to slap in an and false in here, just to make sure that, that code all works. Okay. Yeah, and as you can see, we're getting all that shadow acne back from here before, so... Unless, uh, okay, well, I did say I was going to do this, so I'll do it. Uniform float, um, bias. Uh, let's see, uniform... Where are we setting it for in our render? We're setting all of these... We'll just set one more, the 1f, this.shadowprogram, uniforms.bias. We'll say if this.float extension and this.float linear extension and false. I'll just use the same thing. So if we're using the float extension, then I want the bias to be 0 0.1231. Else... I want the bias to be... what did I have it at before? It was like 0 0.01. What, what did I have it at before? Okay, apparently it was like 0 0.03 or something. Okay. Um, so we'll do 0 0.03. And then here we'll replace this with bias. And finally shadow program dot uniforms equals we need to get that bias uniform bias is going to be me gl get uniform location me dot no shadow no 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 i want the shadow program me gl get uniform location me shadow program bias how's that working working great um, ba -ba 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 -ba. equals get yeah we'll just do that cool so now if they can use the float extension they will and it will load and they'll use floats and everything will be better right now I'm saying and false Let's get rid of that and false, because I have a good enough computer to run this kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to take that back. I don't know what makes get extension work versus what doesn't. Um, I just know that it works on mine, and it doesn't work on my laptop, and it doesn't work on my roommate's computer. So, boom. Well then. Cool, so that was short. So, thanks for watching. This one was... I, I, I made a promise that this one would be shorter, and it actually turned out shorter. You have no idea. I'm actually I'm ecstatic about that. That is awesome. I'm super thrilled, because uh, I was expecting this video to be long, too. But, yeah, so that's how you switch over to using 32-bit floats for every, um, for every pixel in the textures that we're generating for the shadow maps. And, again, 
The reason that's helping is now we just have more floating point precision for each one of these points. Another thing that you can do, and this is actually my original plan, had this not worked out so well, is right here we're doing a whole bunch of these translations to get the lengths to between 0 and 1. You could get rid of all of this entirely and record instead. Instead of the value between 0 and 1, you could just record straight up the length, the distance, and all that. But um, it seems like this is working just fine the way it is. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.